I used to come here as a boy, and I want to tell you about something that happened 83 years ago. In Sittingbourne Urban District Council opened this park, which was once part of the grounds of a great manor house. Gore Court House was built in the 1790s in the parish of Tunstall, and the estate was some 116 acres. It was a grand stately home run by many servants, with the house passing among several owners. In 1837 the Gore Court Cricket Club was formed and played here regularly for over 50 years. The house was at one time owned by the Sittingbourne Brickfield owner George Smead, who often invited the public in for celebrations and fates. After his death in 1881 the house declined somewhat and it was never again a family home. It was used as a boarding school for a while around the turn of the century but this was already closed by the time of the First World War when the army took over the house and park. After the war the house was in a bad way and after various lots were sold off the house was demolished in 1926. Much of the park was being built on but in 1935 the council's open spaces committee viewed the remainder just over 15 acres with a view to retaining it for the community with a grant from the National Memorial Fund. King George V had died in January 1936 and though the town had been recently celebrating the coronation of his son this was about a memorial for the old king. The park, to be called King George's Field, was to be opened on Saturday October the 2nd at 3pm by the Right Honourable Lord Harris MC and the public were invited to attend. Lord Harris was no stranger to the town, and indeed no stranger to the park. He was related to previous owners of the house, and his late father had played cricket here. Lord Harris's late father had accompanied the Prince of Wales on his visit to Sittingbourne and Milton in 1921, and Lord Harris and Lady Harris had officiated at several town events. They had been present when the new Odeon Cinema had been opened in January of this year. The camera pans across the crowd in Park Avenue, showing members of the fire brigade, Boy Scouts, the police and the general public excitedly gathered and flags waving. We see Len Baker in a bowl hat, with Lord Harris in a boater and Lady Harris in a white hat. Behind a G.H. Potter, the clerk to the council, and Mrs. Potter in a dark hat and stole. Councillor A.L. Baker, known as Len Baker, is the chair of Sydneybourne and Milton Urban District Council and also chair of the council's Open Spaces Committee and will preside. It is golden sunshine and a perfect autumn day. Mr. Baker speaks into a microphone on a low platform and welcomes everyone. He speaks about how proud the town will be of this park, about his lordship's associations with the park, and the town's long association and use of the park for sports and leisure occasions. He praises and thanks the Playing Fields Association and Mr Lashmar, the architect. He then asks Lord Harris to open the gates and hands him a souvenir key with which to do so. The little girl is Miss Pauline Lashmar, this is Mr Potter's granddaughter. She presents a bouquet to Lady Harris. Her ladyship presents Pauline with one of the carnations from the bouquet. Lord Harris speaks about his memories of the park and how pleased he is to be doing this. What an asset it will be to the town. He then unveils the heraldic panels on the gateposts and declares the park open by turning the key in the lock and swinging open the gates. Turning back to the crowd, he then hands a letter to Mr Baker, who passes it to Mr Potter for him to read to the assembled audience. It is a letter of congratulation from the chairman of the King George's Field Foundation and signed Clement Attlee. Now we see Councillor Reverend Harry Bradburn speaking in prayer and delivering a dedication for the park. The Paper Mills Band plays the national anthem. Now we see the band 
leading the way up the drive to the beat of a drum to be followed by the VIPs, members of the council and then the general public. They'll stop on the east side of the pavilion to plant a commemorative tree and the Reverend Harry Bradburn says another prayer of dedication and then they will move on to the south face of the pavilion. A crowd is gathered in front of the pavilion, the former stable block of Gore Court, reconfigured by the architect Mr Lashmar. Mr Baker has asked Lord Harris to unveil two brass tablets set in the pavilion wall, which he does. Lord Harris is thanked by Councillor Bedell, who also congratulates Mr Baker for his part in proceedings and praises Mr Lashmar. The party then proceeded to the west side of the pavilion and the chairman, Mr Baker, planted a tulip tree in memory of Councillor E. F. Handcock who had died earlier this year. Councillor Bugs spoke about Councillor Handcock who had, as chairman, steered the town through some of the dark years of the Great War. Councillor Handcock had been chairman of the council from 1917 to 1920 and sat on Sittingbourne Urban District Council for 28 years. After the council's amalgamation, he had been the council's representative on the Kent County Playing Fields Association. Harry Bradburn then dedicated the tree in the presence of Mrs Hancock. The crowd of several hundred members of the public then split up and inspected the pavilion and the park. A group of Merston Council schoolgirls performed maypole and figure dancing. A group of girls from Holy Trinity School performed traditional country dances and some boys from Sittingbourne Council School did some physical training demonstrations. The Sittingbourne Paper Mills Band, under the supervision of Bandmaster D. King, played in between items, and the sunshine was enjoyed by all until it was time to go home. The East Kent Gazette reported that everyone concerned with the organisation of the event was to be congratulated. I certainly hope and expect that King George's Field will continue to give pleasure to the community for many years to come.